Hi everyone, welcome back to Junior Church. The week has flown by and here we are again. I hope you had a lovely time. Francis, did you have a wonderful birthday last week? You had a beautiful sunny day and I loved your cake. I saw the picture and it looked beautiful. I hope you had a wonderful time. Um, now, I, I've just kind of taken it a little bit easier this week. I've not been doing so much decorating, just a teeny tiny bit, not much having a little bit more of a restful week, which also means that I haven't built any Lego and I've not really done anything else. So i am not really got news today. So I'm sure you must have some news. So I would love to know what you've been up to. Um, my plan is this week to do a little bit more painting and focus on a little bit more Lego building. So I might have, or at least a partially built uh, model for you to show you next week and you know what, I've just realised that the crochet that I was supposed to be starting, the new new uh, activity, I've not done anything since I made my disastrous egg cosy. So maybe that's what I can do this week is take try again at the crochet. So any hints and tips, please let me know. I would love to know what you know about crochet. I'm sure more than I do. Um, right, I have a question before we get stuck into the Bible. Does anybody go fishing? I can't imagine that you are you are fishing at the moment, but have you ever been fishing in the past? It's not something that I've done, I have to be honest. So if you go fishing, do you catch any fish? Now, have you ever caught a fish that is this big? so big and heavy that you couldn't bring it out of the water, you hadn't needed help. It was so, so big. Well, you may have caught a fish and you may then have eaten it, but have you ever eaten fish for breakfast? I've had some smoked salmon and scrambled egg, you know, I think once for breakfast. I've had it for brunch as well, really lovely. But, I certainly didn't have fish this morning for breakfast, did you? Maybe you did, let me know. Um, but it's not kind of the thing I, uh, well, well, and most people I don't think usually have fish for breakfast. And certainly not necessarily a big kind of head on, tail on, full on fish for breakfast. Um, however, I would say that it's not, it wouldn't be my favourite, it wouldn't be my first choice of breakfast thing. My, I, I definitely have a list of lovely breakfast things. I love croissants, pan of raisin, pan of chocolate, toast and butter, cereal, pancakes, uh, waffles, crumpets. I actually quite like some fruit and yoghurt. You know what, I think I could go on and on and on. What, did I mention pancakes? Love pancakes. I think I have, haven't I? Well, you can't have too many pancakes, can you? Mm -mm -mm. What's your favourite breakfast thing? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what your favourite thing is. We could co compare notes, maybe. Well, the other thing that I really like is cinnamon buns. And that's kind of a special treat on Christmas Day morning. I will make cinnamon buns, pull them out of the oven fresh and then as a family we you know we eat very delicately. We eat our cinnamon buns while we open our Christmas presents and the, the other thing I have for breakfast on Christmas day morning is, it's only allowed to happen on Christmas day now, it's chocolate. <gasps> Either I'll have some chocolate in my stocking or chocolate wrapped up under the tree and a special treat, get to eat some chocolate for breakfast. That's so lovely. Is that what you do in your family? Let me know. I'd love to know if we are chocolate breakfast chocolate eaters on Christmas Day. So let me know via the comments what your favourite breakfast thing is and do you eat chocolate on Christmas morning for breakfast? Well, today's story, there's fish on the menu for breakfast. And before we find out what the story goes like, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that we can come together, that we can share this time, that we can, even though we aren't together in the same room, 
we can still share um, our favourite things, we can share our favourite breakfast things through wonderful technology. Thank you God that even though we can't be together we can still read from the Bible and we pray today God as we look at the Bible, as we listen to uh, the true story today, Lord you would help us to learn more about you, to help, help us to trust you and love you more today because of what you are teaching us. Amen. Okay, so last week we learnt about Jesus appearing to the disciples and it was in a locked room. Um, once Thomas wasn't with them and then eight days later Thomas was. Um, Jesus proved that he'd risen from the dead and he truly was the Messiah. Now, the disciples, Jesus told them that they would soon be sent out to teach people how to be saved from their sins. But Jesus, in the meantime, told them to go to Galilee and wait for him there until the time was right. Now, most of the disciples were from Galilee originally. Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, James, John and two other disciples were by the Sea of Galilee. And this is what happened. We're going to... If you get your Bibles, if you haven't got them, go and get. And we are going to read John chapter 21. And we're going to start at verse 3. Now, as always, I've got the NIRV version. But don't worry, whichever version you've got, the message is the same, just maybe some different words. So, we are... In fact, we are going to read the first seven verses. So verse 3. John 21 verse 3. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciples whom Jesus loved, the disciple whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. Peter was a professional fisherman before he met Jesus. So it was kind of familiar territory. He'd gone back to doing what was familiar, because he wasn't really sure about what he was going to do at the time. So... He went out fishing with the other other disciples who had been fishermen. And they did this at night because did you know that it's the best time to catch fish is at night? And do you know why? Because during the day, the top of the water gets too warm. So the fish, plus birds and all sorts of things, will come in and scoop them out of the water. So the, the fish stay lower down. Now at night, because they're not going to get eaten so well they may not uh, get eaten there's less chance by uh, birds and all sorts of things and it's not too hot on the top the fish kind of are closer to the surface so by going fishing at night the fish are closer to the top so the nets don't have to go all the way to the bottom of the sea so that's why fishing is done at night but they haven't caught anything. The nets are empty. Now, Jesus is stood on the shore, but the disciples don't recognise him. Why do you think the disciples didn't recognise Jesus? Pause the video and have a chat with whoever's in the room with you. Now, I was thinking about this and I thought that maybe the disciples were tired. If you think they'd been up all night trying to catch fish, 
they they were really sleepy and maybe you know sometimes when if, if you're like me and you're so tired sometimes your eyes go a little bit squiffy when you try you're so tired and you're fighting sleep and you can't see things properly it's a bit blurred i thought maybe they couldn't see properly maybe depending on how early it was in the morning maybe it was still a little bit dark or not fully sunshiny so they couldn't really make out who who uh, Jesus' features and his face. But don't forget that on Easter Sunday, when Mary went to the tomb, she didn't recognise Jesus, did she, at the tomb? It wasn't until he spoke. Cleopas and the other disciple, they didn't recognise Jesus on the road to Emmaus. So it, I don't think that it was, it was nothing unusual. And, and kind of, you know, I've read that possibly Jesus' resurrected body was, was different from his, his body before. So maybe, you know, it was to be expected, really, that they didn't recognise him. Well, even though they didn't recognise Jesus, when Jesus told them to throw the net over the right-hand side of the boat... They did it. Why do you think that even though they didn't recognise Jesus, they did as he said? So pause the video and chat again. So maybe there was something in Jesus' voice that made them trust him, that made them do what he told them to do. Maybe they thought, well, we've tried all night. We may as well try once more. They were nothing to lose. Whatever the reason, and you may have a different idea, share with me in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But whatever the reason is, they did just as Jesus had said. Now, when Jesus spoke and told them to do this, this is when the penny dropped for John. Remember, you know, sometimes you get all the clues of something and then suddenly you go, oh, it's like that light bulb moment. Something just causes everything to fall into place. Now, John, who describes, now this is John who wrote it. He describes himself as the disciple that Jesus loved. Now, he, say, he says he's the disciple that Jesus loved is because... That's the way John felt that he was loved by Jesus. It's not he's saying he was the only disciple that was loved by Jesus, but John felt loved by Jesus that he could put that after his name. He said, John, the one, the disciple who Jesus loved, then uh, recognised the voice. Now, do you remember... About three years before this happened, something similar happened. Jesus told Peter to put his net down in deep water, despite being out all night. And at that point, being out all night hadn't caught not even the tiniest little thing. And the same thing happened. You can read it in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. When the nets were put out, as Jesus had told them to, the nets were full of fish, just as happened this time. And maybe this was what caused the penny to drop as well, something else that caused them to remember, because they pulled the nets up. They were so, so heavy. Three years later, the same thing is happening again. It's the same sea, the same fishermen same Jesus and this probably all worked to jog John's memory and he remembered that time maybe when they were first filled with the hope and the excitement that Jesus was the Messiah that they'd been waiting for. Now maybe Jesus did this on purpose, maybe he reenacted this particular scene to bring them back to the time when they had first believed because of course so much had happened in the in the previous few days and last few weeks that you know they just weren't feeling very great about themselves 
Now I can imagine, I, I, you know, when, whenever I read the Bible and read certain things, I think Jesus and God have a sense of humour. Now I wonder if Jesus was stood on the, on the shore and had a little wry grin as he was doing this, as he was saying, throw your nets over the right side. Because Jesus knew this is what had happened three years ago. And he's in this will this will cause them to remember. They'll know who I am. And I wonder if he was just grinning about this. Now, when, when John had said, "'Tis the Lord," Peter didn't, didn't even wait another second, did he? He put on his coat and he leapt in the water and he swam straight to the shore. Let's pick it up at verse 8. Let's find out what happened next. So, verse 8. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were, they were not far from shore, about a 100 metres. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So, we told Jesus, took some bread, gave it to them, and he did the same with the fish. Now, why do you, why do you think he didn't just say, come on lads, you must be hungry, check on in. Pause and have a chat. So why do you think Jesus did this? That he shared the, f he gave them, sorry, let me find the, actual verse and my phone has just moved it down uh, he said come and have breakfast and he just gave them bread and gave them fish so why do you think he did that now is this familiar to you does it remind you of when we think of bread and fish does it remind you of the feeding of the five thousand something that the miracle that the uh, disciples had witnessed. What about the Last Supper and Cleopas and the other disciple on the road to Emmaus? Jesus broke bread and shared it. And now, of course, during the Last Supper, he told the disciples to do this in order to remember him. And on the road to Emmaus, when Cleopas and the other disciple, when they, when they uh, have dinner with Jesus, he breaks the bread and this causes them to recognise Jesus. So again, we told, he breaks the bread, he shares it with the disciples. Now, this could be reinforcing who he is, but also reinforcing for the disciples how important it is to share a meal, but also to be breaking the bread, to remembering, to be remembering Jesus' body. Because remember, in the Last Supper, and when we talk about communion, the bread represents Jesus' body, broken for us. So again, it's all linked in with, in the future, you're going to be teaching my people, teaching the followers, teaching the disciples. So don't forget how important it is to break the bread, to share this special meal. Sharing this meal with his disciples was something special, especially considering that they thought that they weren't going to see Jesus again. So let's carry on. Verse 15. When they'd finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. 
The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Now, three times Jesus asks Peter if he loved him. Why do you think he does this? Why do you think he asks him three times? Pause the video and have a chat. Now in Matthew 26 verse 31, Jesus told the disciples, this very night you will all turn away because of me. Now this is the night before Jesus uh, was um, crucified. Verse 33 of Matthew 26, Peter replied, all the others may turn away because of you, but I never will. Verse 75 of chapter 26. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. The rooster will crow before it does. You will say three times that you don't know me. Peter went outside. He broke down and cried. Now Peter cried because this is exactly what he had done. Three times he had denied knowing Jesus. Three times he said, no, I don't know Jesus. I'm not his friend. Now here on the beach... Jesus gave Peter the, the chance to be humble and tell Jesus that he really did love him. And three times he said it, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Because that cancelled out each time, the three times that previously he said he didn't know Jesus, that he denied knowing him. Because Jesus wanted Peter to look after his followers. Now Jesus knew that Peter loved him. Jesus didn't, Jesus knew, so he didn't actually have to ask Peter because he knew that he loved him. But he was giving Peter the chance, the opportunity to say three times that he loved him, just as he denied Jesus three times. Now Jesus was going to be leaving the disciples soon. He wouldn't be able to af look after his followers. Another word for Jesus' followers are the sheep. So he was giving Peter a very important job to look after Jesus' followers. That's us. Now Peter had made a mistake. Jesus had forgiven him and given him a chance of a fresh start. Now everyone makes mistakes. I do. You do. And if God only used perfect people, who could he use? Well, he couldn't use anyone because no one is perfect other than Jesus. So Jesus uses people who love him as much as they can. Now, there are many heroes in the Bible. Some are rich, some poor, some strong, some weak. One thing they have in common is that they love God. Now, some of you might feel like God is too far away or too hard to get to know for you to actually love him. Well, hear this. Switch on your ears. Hear this. God is not far away. He loves you and he wants you to love him. So in order to love him, we need to know him. Spend time with him. So we need to read the Bible. It's what we've been doing today. Spend time with other Christians. Well, we've done that, not in the flesh, but we've done that together. And spend time praying. Well, we prayed at the beginning, we're going to pray at the end. So we're kind of doing all the right things, but we need to do more of it, don't we? We need to be doing more of it, not just on a Sunday. So think about how you can do that in the week. The more you do, the more you get to know Jesus and the more you love him. So let's pray. 
Thank you, God, that even though we aren't perfect, you love us and you use us. Please help us to get to know you more by reading the Bible and praying to you. Thank you that you provide way more than we deserve. Thinking about not just one or two fish in the fisherman's net, there were 153 fish. You bless them abundantly and you do that for us, God. Thank you that you meet all of our needs. Please help us during this strange time to stay safe, to look after ourselves and our family. Thank you, God, for your amazing love. Amen. Now, I did find a couple of other prayers this week, and I thought I, I might share one when we're thinking about uh, being close to God. And we might feel that actually he's too far away. As I said, we might feel he's too far away for us to um, get to know. But this is a prayer remembering God is with us. Lord God, you are always with me. You are with me in the day and in the night. You are with me when I'm happy and when I'm sad. You are with me, with me when I'm healthy and when I'm ill. You are with me when I am peaceful and when I am worried. Now, you might be feeling a little bit strange or a bit however you're feeling today. So, you could pray to God. You could show um, share with him how you're feeling. And then we can say, help me, God, to remember that you love me and are with me in everything today. So that's a good prayer to remember. Remember that in, in during the week. And you can always play back the video and watch that bit again if you wanted to remember that prayer. You can maybe jot it down or make your own version of that prayer so that you can keep praying that every day. That would be awesome. Well, that's it from me. Thank you very much for sharing this time with me. And remember, Jesus shared that meal with the, with his disciples and they had lovely chats and they spent lovely time together. So my prayer for you and your family today is that when you're sat around your table, you're having a lovely meal, you're sharing lovely food that God has provided. I pray that you would have a wonderful meal time that you will have lovely conversations with your family and that you will feel really blessed by this time together. I certainly have been blessed by my time with you today. So join me next week for Junior Church. And also, don't forget, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we've had some technical issues this week, but normally, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we've got some um, story time. So please join me for that. We started a new book last week awesome it's diary of a disciple luke's story so if you've heard that tune in awesome i'd love to see you then so until next time have a great week stay safe god bless and see you soon bye everyone <laughs>